All right, Robbie, fifth and final question. This one comes from longtime True Fire member and friend of the fire, Jeff. Uh, Robbie, thanks for doing these courses. I really do get a lot out of them. Once you could play fluently the major scale in any key up and down the neck, is there an advantage to thinking in modes when improvising as opposed to major scale focusing on a different note? Well, Jeff, thank you. Um, great question. And I think, you know, a lot of guys have been uh, writing in these these kind of questions. And a lot of the time I get these questions where it's based on, you know, learning the scale, but then not really knowing how to apply that. And I would say it's perfect to know the, the major scale across the fretboard. It's a great way of, of doing it, of course. But then you need to know what's within that scale that you can resolve to, i.e. all of your tonal centers, etc. right? But a lot of the time is there's this pain threshold that guys are trying to get through where they think that they've got to outline each of the chords as they go by with the mode that's related to that chord. Now, that's a, a great thing to do if you can, but a lot of the time it stops you being musical. And what you end up being is linear. You play linear runs, okay, stuff like that. So my whole concept that I've been um, talking about in this course is the fact that if you identify the tonal center of all of the chords that you're playing over, it frees you up to be creative and play the notes from the scale and play music rather than trying to outline chords. Now, we all know that I'm an advocate of playing arpeggios. Also, you may, may or may not know that the arpeggios come from those scales. So every one of those arpeggios comes from the major scale. All right? So you can color them that way if you want to. But one of the best approaches for me with a lot of music is there's a tonal center that all of those chords keep coming back to. Okay? And one of the key things that I wanted to identify as well for a lot of guys is we, as guitarists, I think, tend to play licks and we play as guitarists and stuff like that. And I keep saying, well, use the scales to be musical, play melodies, motifs, and stuff like that. And I think when you stop trying to cover all of the chords, you can let the chords sometimes work for you. All right, and I've said that to a lot of guys. How about you hit that one note and let the three or four chords go by and let the note work for you and the chords work for you rather than trying to cover all of them, okay? Um, because to me, it's not a technical exercise. So what I would say is if you know your major scale everywhere on the fretboard, now start creating chord progressions and saying to yourself, now where do I apply and how do I apply that scale to this chord progression, all right? And start listening to it as tonal centers as opposed to a string of chords that you've got to try and cover um, with different modalities, if you like. Think about one modality and then resolution. Um, I'm going to give you an example of that. Again, I think we've got a track that might fit um, this example. And it's a Lydian progression, which means you're resolving to the tonal center of the four chord within the key. And it's a really simple progression. It's basically a D chord um, to an E <coughs> with a C sharp in the bass and then back to the D. But you hear the tonality going back to D. And one of my things is creating melodies and memorable hooks. So I'm going to play a little bit for you and then kind of wrap this, this up. But think about it this way, if you would, um, Jeff, and you know, start creating some musical progressions that then you apply your scale to and go, wow, I'd never thought about it that way or I'd never played my scale as a melody as opposed to licks or stuff like that. So start thinking about the knowledge that you know and applying it maybe a little differently, okay? Um, can we play, is that cool we play over that track and... Oh, okay, well, it was a capo thing. So I'm gonna show you these chords, but they're cool anyway, right? But I used a capo to get me in the key of A. So here's what I did. I'm playing some great voicings, but they didn't give me the open strings I want. So I put the capo on the guitar and here they are. <laughs> Now basically this would have been a C with the sharp 11 in it. Now that sharp 11 is the characteristic tone of the Lydian mode, all right? Now, I wanted this voicing, so I've capoed here, that C now becomes a D, okay? So it's that simple, but here's the progression. <laughs> Now, 
Now, I'm not going to try and color the changes, all right? We know it keeps coming back to the D here. Sorry, that's a little muddy sound. But you can hear the tonality, all right? So, so it's a D major with the added sharp 11 to an E chord to a C sharp in the bass, then back, okay, to the D. And it's all in the key of A, guys, all right? So everything that I've shown you so far has been in the key of A, actually. And it's going to help you really focus on why we're doing what we're doing. Now, I'm going to play this melody, so I don't need the capo, but that's what the chords were, mm. okay? So I'm going to run this a little bit and show you a melodic approach to the tonal center there of the four chord. So a melodic approach as opposed to fast licks, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want you to start thinking in terms of that. If you know your scales, you can play great lead licks and stuff like that. Don't bog yourself down with trying to color all of the tones as they go past quickly. If you can, great, and, if, and it's an approach, and it's a valid approach. But there's more music to be had by thinking about melodies, hooks, and maybe the tonal center and coloring that too, all right? So give that a try, see if that helps you break, you know, the box a little bit. And those seven notes, start making them be powerful for you um, in other ways, okay? <laughs> 